salvation Say Jesus is my salvation Jesus is my righteousness Jesus is my righteousness right hands to heaven let's pray together father we rejoice we thank you for the privilege and the honor that we have to come humbly before your precious written word thank you lord that the mighty holy spirit lives on our inside to guide us into all the truth concerning what you have for us and this morning as we adventure in the study of your word into the unsearchable riches of christ thank you lord that your power is made available to us and I decree that your people are built up, equipped, edified. Jesus is glorified. And I thank you that by the end of the service, we'll all be the better for it. So we give you praise for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together. So say these words, I am born of God. I am born of, God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. 
never ever be the same again in Jesus name and every believer says a powerful amen, amen. I didn't hear that amen. amen we want to welcome everybody connected to this service watching by way of Kingdom Life Network Facebook YouTube Twitter Instagram we're so glad to welcome all of our brothers online this morning to the service and all of the Aquaibom State community. We're so excited to welcome all of you watching by, I mean, listening to us by way of Comfort FM, XL FM, Radio Aquaibom, you know, you FM, Inspiration FM, those of you connected by Heritage FM, we're so glad to welcome every one of you. Do me a favor, you want to reach out to your loved ones, your friends and family and ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. We want to also welcome those of you that are connected by social media. It's an honor to always have all our brethren online, our church online. How many of you know we have a lot of them online all over the world in millions? Can we celebrate all of the online community? All our families and brothers and friends online. You know, you, you the online brethren, you are so wonderful. We want you to know we honor you, we appreciate all of you. We're glad to have all of you as part of our church family. And like you've always done, let's do it again together. Let's get the word to the ends of the earth. Help us share the video on your page. Tag some people. Put them on as many groups as possible. Put them on monogram, telegram. Put them on Instagram. I mean, put them everywhere. Put them even on WhatsApp groups. Let's get this word to the ends of the earth. And you know, we love you. We're glad that God has added all of you to our family and together. We're getting this gospel to the ends of the earth. And if today is your first time of joining our service, we're glad. We welcome you. Get ready. It's going to be an, an adventure in the word of his grace. I also want to welcome all our campuses around the world. We're so glad to have all the campuses all over the world connected to the service. Guys, it's going to be a great time as we adventure into the riches of God's grace. All right, everybody in the building, are you excited to be here this morning? Can we celebrate the word of God with a shout this morning? Glory! Amen! Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self as we get into the word this morning. <clears throat> we started studying this morning and experiencing the miraculous. And we began to talk about the miraculous. When is the miraculous? We began to examine miracles, you know. As a child of God and as you begin to grow in the knowledge of Christ. From time to time, as a human being, you will come to a time where you need a miracle. Either for yourself or for somebody else. Where you need a miracle. Either for yourself or for somebody else. And this morning I began to talk about the fact that there are some people that cannot discern when it's miracles. They can't discern the timing of a miracle. So you can actually be around where a miracle is taking place but you are not aware of its operationality. You know, turn your Bibles to the book of Ma Luke chapter 5, verse number 17. Luke chapter 5, verse number 17. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching. As he was teaching. If your Bible is mine, I will underline the word teaching. As he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. Now hold on. As he was teaching. So in the first service, we established that Christianity is a knowledge-based faith. A knowledge-based faith. That is why every time you see Jesus healed, he taught first. He had to teach. It was the teaching that brought about the healings. If you observe the ministry of Jesus. The teaching ministry was at the fore. That was the crux or the depth of Jesus' ministry. To teach. It therefore means that Jesus wasn't going from place to place looking for who to heal or who wants healing. He went from place to place to teach the world. But alongside with the teaching of the world was the miracles and the healing. Oftentimes he was teaching. In other words, there's a whole lot of emphasis on the teaching ministry 
of Jesus. Like I said, Christianity is a faith that is communicated by knowledge. A faith that is communicated by knowledge. So Jesus keeps teaching. In fact, he was even called a rabbi or a teacher. A teacher. Nicodemus called him a teacher come from God. You are a teacher come from God. The rich young ruler called him good teacher. Good teacher. What shall I do to inherit the kingdom of God? Now we also took time this morning to establish that the miraculous is a demonstration of the power of God. When the power of God is demonstrated, it is called miracles. So the power of God working in a situation or the power of God intervening in the natural course, in the natural course of life. That intervention is what we call a miracle. Please pay attention. So a miracle is not logical. A miracle is not logical. A miracle is a supernatural intervention of God. It means that the power of God suspending a natural cause of things. That is, nature has already established that this is the way things ought to happen. And then the power of God intercepts. And by that interception, suspends nature and does what was not possible naturally. Now, is there anything wrong in the natural? No, nothing is wrong in the natural. But when the natural cause of things is not the desired expectation, if what nature is producing is not what you expect, it's not what you are looking for, it's not what solves your need. All right? If the results you are getting from the natural is not making a positive impact on you, which means at that point you need to believe for a miracle. You need to believe for a miracle. Christianity is a faith of miracles. Christianity was birthed in the miraculous. It was birthed in the miraculous. It functions within the confines of the miraculous. The Christian faith is a miracle-based faith. Because even the incarnation itself is a miracle. The resurrection is a miracle. Salvation is a miracle. That you are born again is a miracle. Because born again is a resurrection from the dead. You were dead in sins. To be born again is to be begotten again unto a lively hope. You are born of the spirit. You are born of God. That's a miracle. It has no natural explanation. Are we still in the building? It's a miracle. It has no natural explanation. Look at Luke chapter 1 verse 37. Luke chapter 1 verse 37. For with God nothing shall be impossible. The angel comes to Mary and they had this conversation. And the angel said, with God, nothing shall be impossible. The Greek rendering of it reads, no word of God lacks power. No word of God lacks power. In that Luke chapter 1 verse 38, Luke chapter 1 verse number 38, put it up for me. And Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Be it unto me according to thy word. Why? Because no word of God lacks ability. Or no word of God lacks power. Look at me everybody. No word of God lacks ability. No word of God lacks power. Meaning that the word of God carries within it the inherent power to accomplish it. The word of God does not import extra. No, the word of God is self-contained. Within the word of God is the ability to make it happen. Within that same word. Are you still in the building? Yeah. Why? Because the angel brought to Mary words. Words 
from the scripture. He says, no word lacks ability. Say with me, everybody. No word of God lacks ability. Can I hear you say it like you have some strength in your body? No word of God lacks ability. All right. So in the natural course of things, a husband and wife gets together sexually to have children. But this is God now coming into God coming into man. And it didn't happen by husband and wife having sexual intercourse. Yet, the result that husband and wife will have was produced without the natural cause of sexual intimacy. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. Are you still here? That's a miracle. Please stay with me. So, it was exactly a miracle. See how it happened. He said to Mary, the power of God, the power of God shall overshadow you. You can't have miracles without the power of God. So, miracles are not luck. They are not happenstances. Miracles are not coincidences. No, they are not coincidences. They are not happenstances. Miracles are not luck. I'm lucky. No, they are not. A miracle is a deliberate, intentional manifestation or demonstration of God's power. Deliberate or intentional demonstration of God's power. If you read the four gospels, you have a good number of miracles. The book of Acts equally has a lot of miracles. Look at Acts chapter 2 verse 43. Acts chapter 2 verse number 43. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Look at Acts chapter 3. The lame man at the gate beautiful. He was sitting there begging for alms for the poor. Peter and John were going to the temple at the hour of prayer. At the hour of prayer. Every serious believer. Every serious child of God. Who has come to realize what it means to be born again. Does not play with prayer. They had an hour of prayer. Meaning that was an appointment they kept all the time. It was their hour of prayer. If you play with prayer, it is an indication that you have not yet understood what we're involved with. They were going to the temple at the hour of prayer, intentionally and deliberately. And on their way to prayer, they met the layman at the gate beautiful begging for arms. And they said to him, silver and gold we don't have here. But we have something. We have something. Men of prayer always have something. Yeah. Men of prayer always have something. Because the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man make power, tremendous power available. A man given to prayer carries an atmosphere of power all the time. All the time. He carries an atmosphere of power all the time. Nothing takes him by surprise because ahead he has already generated enough power to arrange and rearrange things. So when he encounters things, the power to rearrange them is already carrying it with him. That is why you pray without ceasing. That's why as a believer that will win all the time, you put on the whole armor of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication with perseverance for all saints. You can play with prayer. If you are playing with prayer, know that you are denying God the permission to manifest his miraculous power in your life because prayer is giving God access Prayer is giving God access into the cause of the events of your life. It's giving God, God cannot force you. God is not a tyrant, he's a father. He only steps in when he is permitted. 
If you don't permit him, he can't step in. And how do you permit God to get involved? Prayer. When you start praying, you and God are in partnership together to carry out his purpose on the earth. You know, it seems to me that God, from what I have read in scripture, can do nothing until somebody prays. God can do nothing when prayers are scarce. God's power is lean. When prayers are scarce, God's power is scarce because it takes prayer to partner with the invisible and bring the invisible to interface with the visible. A miracle is an interruption of the invisible taking dominion over the visible. Jakotama. And every child of God ought to live that life. Because that is your heritage in Christ. The miraculous is your heritage. You are born a miracle. Your birth is a miracle. Jakotana. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. You are born of the spirit. You are born of God. With men it is impossible. But with God and that is your birth. You are born of possibilities. With God all things. So because you came out of God. You are in God and with God all things are possible. Am I talking to somebody here? Shout this very loud. There are no impossibilities in my life. All things are possible. Say, I live a life of total possibilities. Jakota Naga. Brenda Gozokule Nemehe. Jajokotonike Lina Maha. Angra Nonzokula Namaha. Dedre Negegele Nemosa. Say of the Spirit of God, there has never been a scarcity of my power. All the power that you will ever need, I made available to you at the point of your birth. You were born with all of my power. You were not born deficient. You were born complete. Everything that constitutes me was packaged together to give birth to you, saith God. But you will have to place a demand on the resources that are available to you by regeneration. And you place that demand intentionally so you make that power available in the natural. So you see, saith God, when you do not give yourself intentionally to take off and take from my power, then you live the life of defeat. You live the life, you live a life that is full of apologies. You live a life that attracts sympathy and sorrow. Then you live under undue pressures. Saith God, I never designed for you to live a life of pressure. I designed for you to live a life of rest. But you cannot function in rest from the natural. You only function in rest from the spiritual. From the spiritual. From the spiritual. That's why in my word I said to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded when your mind is full of the spiritual possibilities that are available to you. You function from a place of rest and no devil in hell has what it takes to discomfort your position. Because you exercise superiority over devils. You function in your full capacity, saith God. You function in your full abilities. And all of those abilities are abilities that the devil and his cohorts cannot withstand. Because the light and darkness, saith God, has never had a competition. 
Oh yeah, I said in my word that the light shines in darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend the light. The light dominates darkness. Darkness and the light never fight. The exit of light is the dominance of darkness. And the entrance of light is the absence of darkness. So you yield to my spirit and you yield to my word and you take off and take from the resources that I have made available to you in the spirit and use them to live a life of victory and a life of total dominion on the earth, saith God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So, a miracle is deliberate. Deliberate. The power of God in demonstration. And like I said, if you read the four Gospels, they came to the man and they get beautiful. Silver and gold have we known. But such as we have, we give unto you in the name of Jesus you, 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 you rise up, you, in the name of Jesus, you rise up and walk. And the man stood up, the man, they spoke. The man received. The man believed. And to prove that he believed, he acted. They didn't act for him. There is a difference between miracles and magic. That's what I'm teaching next Sunday. There is a difference between miracles and magic. They look alike, but they are not the same. Seller. The man stood up and began to walk. In Acts chapter 5, the shadow of Peter, the shadow of Peter fell on sick people and discharged them. Because you see, the anointing of God on your inside can be so visible that it becomes tangible. It becomes tangible. That as you walk across people, the effulgence of what you carry could fall on them and create miracles. A woman in Calabar was on admission critically sick for months. And her husband invited me to preach. As I walked into the city of Calabar and I was driven to the hotel, I didn't know that the wife insisted that her husband should discharge her from the hospital that day, that she must receive me at my arrival. That she's not going to be in the hospital while I am in town. So I didn't know the husband had brought her critically sick. She couldn't even stand up. They had to carry her to the hotel and she was in the car waiting. So as we we arrived at the hotel premises. They brought the woman out. As soon as she saw me, she stretched her hands for a hug. I gave her the hug. That was a miracle. Instantly, the tangibility of God's power hit her body and knocked off every sickness. The power of God could, could be so unleashed from your inside that it becomes so heavy that it is tangible. The power of God could function like electricity, like a current. That's why there's no distance in the realm of the spirit. It doesn't matter where you are, especially for those of you watching online. It doesn't matter where you are, there's no distance in the spirit. The power of God could be so tangible that it will travel to wherever you are and take care instant. And it does not travel with seconds late. It is real time. It is real time, irrespective of where you are and irrespective of 
what distance you are from. The tangibility of the anointing. Keep that somewhere because that's a teaching for another time. <clears throat> In Acts of the Apostles chapter 6, Stephen did miracles among the people. The whole book of Acts is covered with miracles. In chapter 8, Philip went to Samaria. Give me that chapter 8 verse 5 of Acts. Acts chapter 8 verse number 5. And Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. That is always in the fall. Teaching and preaching. And preach Christ unto them. And as a result of the preaching of Christ. Give me verse 6. As a result of the preaching of Christ. The people with one accord gave heed unto those things. Which Philip spake. And as they gave heed, what was the next thing? Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. In the first service this morning, we had the instant miracles. Doctor, you were the one receiving all the testimonies here. We had the instant miracles all over this place. And even online, I have a number of emails from all over the world. While we were speaking here in the first service, people were getting healed all over the world. The testimonies are right on my phone. I just read a number of them. I don't have time. We will take them, but I just wanted to know. Because it doesn't take... They, they came and no shakia now, the power of God is never short except men fail to make a demand on it no matter how many people would draw from God's power it is never scarce it never goes low it's always more than enough so everybody can pull from God's power and everybody can take of it and it will still be available for another time. Are you here? And I'm going to show you what I'm saying in a few minutes. <clears throat> so Philip preached, miracles followed. In Acts chapter 9, Ananias coming to the saints and Dorcas, the raising of Dorcas back to life. In Acts chapter 14, Paul and Barnabas. And on and on till Acts chapter 19 and Acts chapter 28. The book of Acts is full of miracles. Full of miracles all over the place. Now, what about the epistles? One of the things that Paul records as an information for us to know in the church is a gift called the walking of miracles. The walking. The walking. Listen everybody. The walking of miracles. There is no gift of miracles it is the gift of the walking. A miracle is walked. A miracle is walked. It is the walking of miracles. Are we following? You will see that gift in operation in the Old Testament. When the prophet instructed the man, the sons of the prophets, to put the axe in the water. And an iron got in the water and was swimming that is not natural that is a miracle an iron swimming in the water floating because the iron got lost and the sons of the prophet said to the prophet alas master it was borrowed and the prophet gave them an instruction and when they obeyed from the ground where the iron was it floated and came out to the surface for the sons of the prophets to take hold that means the power of God functions in the restorative the restorative because the power of God is restorative the power of God is curative and the power of God is creative and the power of God is preservative all within the power are these manifestations. And they are supernatural. They are supernatural. They are supernatural. The walking of miracles. It, it was walked. Naaman the leper. The prophet told him, jump in the river how many times? Seven. That's the walking of a miracle. It is walked. It is walked. In doing miracles, it is a participation of the super and the natural. It's not magic. It's worked. Alright? Now, <clears throat> the working of miracles. Now, stay with me. So, in 
2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10. Put it up for me. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse number 10. <clears throat> Sorry, 12. 12 verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse number 10. <clears throat> Therefore, Sorry, 1 Corinthians 12, 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. <clears throat> to another, the walking of miracles. The walking of miracles. Okay? Now, in 2 Corinthians, or, yeah, 2 Corinthians 12, 12, Brother Paul says, the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders, and mighty deeds signs and wonders and mighty deeds in galatians chapter 3 verse 5 brother paul will say in galatians chapter 3 verse 5 he therefore that ministered to you the spirit and walk it walk it are you observing and walk it miracles so there's a walking and walk it miracles among you do it it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Now that's for the believers. The working of miracle among us is made possible by the hearing of faith. So he speaks of miracles. Now the first thing is this. What were miracles for? What were miracles for? Miracles are a sign of the resurrection of Jesus. Miracles are a sign of the resurrection of Jesus. Either before the resurrection or after the resurrection. <clears throat> John chapter 20 verse 31. John chapter 20 verse 31. Look at what brother John says but... These are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. That you might believe. It's documented that you might believe and in believing you might have life. So the end product of miracles is to bring you face to face with life himself with life himself look at mark chapter 16 verse 17 after jesus rose from the dead and this sign shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues next verse so tonguing is a sign they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing preservative it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover look at verse 20 verse 20 glory to god and they went forth and preached everywhere and as a result of their preaching, the Lord walking with and confirming the word. Confirming what? The word. So, when the word is taught, when the word is rightly taught, God functions with his word in confirmation with signs and wonders. And you must always expect that when the word is taught, you are ready at that time to receive a miracle. For no word of God shall be void of power. Metal Adaba. Teaching good? No word of God shall be void of power. No word of God shall be void of power. So whether before he died or after, he rose. Signs and miracles are evidences of his resurrection. Dr. Gabriel, you will like this one. Signs and wonders are a foretaste of immortality. They are a foretaste, not a full taste. A foretaste. Signs and wonders happen... As evidence that there will be a resurrection of the body. 
is a proof that that power is able to repair a body. Kaya is able to create an organ. <laughs> that power is able to renew age. You see, recall skin become new. You see a man that is supposed to be old suddenly like a young boy. People like us. Every year young. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. He redeemed your soul from destruction, who forgiveth all your sins and iniquities, and renewed your youth like the eagles. Am I talking to somebody here? There is within the power of God the ability to renew your organs. Yeah, to renew your organs. Things that are supposed to wear out because of some dietary deficiencies. God's power gets in there and renews the organ. And all of a sudden, what will have been a deficiency becomes an advantage because the miraculous suspended the course of nature. Am I teaching good? Stay with me. The believer who does not understand how to make available power for the miraculous suffers a lot of defeats that are unnecessary. <laughs> Struggles that are uncalled for. Sorrows that are not required. Yeah. <laughs> a believer that does not understand the miraculous lives a life like an unbeliever. The only difference is that he knows he's born again. The miraculous and the gifts of the spirit is our ephesi. Yeah. The gifts of the spirit. That's our ephesi. We do not make guy, we do not boast in natural things. Our real boasting is when we can look at you and give you a word of knowledge. We look at you and give a word of wisdom. We lay hands on you and body that is supposed to break down, revibrates. That is where our ephesi is. Yeah. Yeah. When they say it cannot work, we tell them you don't know who you're talking to. We nango liatoba. Mebreneke, nebreneke la kodahana. Juanengla. And then things are suddenly rearranged. And what they said was not possible. Possibility several. You have to choose which one. I prophesy as your amen will come like thunder. You will swim in the miraculous. That you may know the exceeding greatness of his power to all wars who believe according to the working there is an energy there is an activity there is an activity it is called the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead somebody shout the power is at work in my body say the power of God is at work in my body say there is an activity of power in my body putting things in perspective for effective functionality Jakaya Namahata to know to know that power that raised Christ from the dead that you may be filled with all the fullness of God maximum load of God Jekoladabaha Mebronda Gagalaya Please sit down, give me a moment. Jacolotaba. Miracles are already happening all over this place. Radio audience, get ready. Miracles are already happening. So, miracles are a foretaste of immortality. Miracles are a foretaste, not a full taste. Which means, miracles can never be an end. But, they are a means to an end. Or miracles are interventions 
in natural occurrences. So we have the miracles of healing. The miracles of healing. We have the miracles of provision. The miracles of provision. The miracles of provision. <laughs> we are all of a sudden. You were looking for money to pay rent. Money to start a business. Suddenly, the miraculous moved somebody who has money to identify you and be interested. He takes money and tells you, help yourself. That's a miracle. Miracles have no explanation. How many of you are ready for miracles? They have no explanation. We have miracles of provision. Miracles of provision. I have encountered provision miracles in my life. I cannot count. I have encountered provision miracles in my life to a point where there was a time, I've told you the story, I went to America and I was coming back, you know, and because sometimes when coming back, you really don't need money. Okay? So, the money I had in my hand were dollars. So, um, you know, I just put them into their bank and left, travel out of America without them. But something happened, I couldn't get a flight. And then the flight that was available was suspended for hours. Then I became hungry. I was so hungry in Lagos Airport, and I didn't have money. But I was very hungry. So I just said to the Lord, I said, Lord, <laughs> your temple is hungry. Lord, your temple is hungry. Therefore, it may not be able to carry you well. <laughs> I'm telling you. And then I said, thank you, Father. I receive a miracle now. Thank you, Lord. And then I was just walking casually around the airport and just giving God thanks. A guy just saw me and shouted, hey! He came quickly. Oh, man of God, what a blessing. He held my two legs. He was thanking me. I told him to stand up. As he stood up, he put his hand in his pocket and brought out a bundle of Naira, 1,000 1, notes, a bundle, and said, man of God, I don't have much. Please, take this and send me your account. That's how I got a bundle of thousands of Naira. I entered restaurant straight. I said, come, 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 quickly, quickly. Organize because my flight. <laughs> the, the temple was taken care of. I ate and I was ready to pay for everybody inside that place. And I still had more than enough. And he still says, send your account. So after eating, my eyes were clear. Quickly, I send the account. Because that's a miracle. It's a miracle of provision. Ay, 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 ay. Look at the lilies. They don't walk, yet they don't lack. How much more are you? Are you not much better than this? As your amen is coming like thunder, where you need a miracle, receive a miracle. Say, I receive a miracle right now in Jesus' name. Shout amen like thunder. Please sit down. Miracles of provision. There are miracles of healings. There are miracles of provision. Peter said, we have toiled all night. And we caught nothing. In Luke chapter 5. Nevertheless. So every time the word of God comes. It comes with power for the miraculous. Nevertheless at thy word. At thy word. We let down the nets. And the Bible says, they caught great fish until they almost sank with the fishes. That's a miracle of provision. That's a miracle of provision. Get about that. There's a scripture, whenever I read, it just excites me. In John chapter 6 verse 17, follow this story, you will like it. John chapter 6 verse 17, and they entered into a ship and went over the sea towards Capernaum and it was now dark. And Jesus was not come to them. So Jesus had gone ahead of them. And they were coming to follow him in a boat. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed, they had rowed the boat. 
Five and twenty or thirty furlongs. They have just started the journey. They have not gone far. They see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship and they were afraid. But he saith unto them, it is I, be not afraid. Now observe. Then they willingly received him. They received him. He has to be received into the ship and immediately, immediately he entered the ship. The ship was at the land whither they went. You didn't see what I just showed you. They just started a journey to go somewhere. They have not gone far. They saw Jesus. As soon as Jesus entered the boat, they arrived. He suspended matter, suspended distance, and suspended time. When a miracle happens, time, matter, and distance are suspended. You know why? When eternity invades time, matter don't matter. Did you hear what I just said? When eternity invades time, matter don't matter. A miracle is the invasion of eternity into time. And once eternity steps into time, time is suspended, matter is suspended, distance don't exist. Distance don't exist. You remember? <laughs> Uh, are you still here? <laughs> Elijah told Ahab, get on your horse and go. For there is a sound of abundance of rain. The king got on the horse and began to race towards Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord rested on him. You've waited for it. Now it comes. Jekuna. Legoro. Tosuka. Lapata. Makete. 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 Egebo. It comes. It comes. It comes. It comes. The hand of the Lord rested on him as soon as the hand of the Lord came on Elijah bam he was in Jezreel waiting for Ahab you didn't understand he was in Jezreel waiting for Ahab Ahab was still racing and coming Elijah was waiting Elijah told him bye bye when he left he left Elijah. On arrival, Elijah told him, welcome. <laughs> Time, matter, and distance suspended by the miraculous. By the miraculous. Higher. 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 Zekotokos. Jacolomohota. Jesus took the boy's bread and fish. Miracles of provision. Bread and fish. Nobody knew what was going to happen with bread and fish. The working of miracles. The working of miracles. They gave him fish and bread. He didn't just work miracles from abstract. They gave him fish and bread. He gave thanks. Observe. After giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples. The multiplication didn't happen in Jesus' hand. It happened in the hands of the apostles. As they were giving people bread and fish, the bread and fish never finished. They kept giving and every time they gave, it was still there. You don't understand what I'm saying. They gave and when they were leaving, it was still in their hand. That is how people ate and remained 12 baskets full. It's a miracle of provision. I believe in miracles. Hagabada. I say, I believe in miracles. Kaboyadash. Zekula da babash. 
If anybody tell you they don't believe in miracles, tell them to come here and see miracles. Tell them, come and see. We swim in it. It's our natural habitation. The miraculous. It's, a, it's our natural life. It's our natural realm. It's our realm of operation. The miraculous. Somebody say, I hear you. I'm not hearing you say, I hear you. So the power of God suspended a natural cause of things. The question is, is God's power always available? Yes. God's power is always available. Look at the children of Israel. When they left Egypt for Canaan, they were close to 3 million. Close to 3 million. And by history, only two people believed what God said. And only those who believed entered the promised land. Of course, in the wilderness, they had miracles of provision. All over. Miracles of provision. When they wanted water, rock gave them water. When they wanted food, manna fell from the sky. When they wanted clothes, their clothes became ever new. It never ran out. As their legs were growing, their shoes in their legs were growing. And the shoes never wore out. It was ever new. That's the miracle of provision. When believers learn to live in the miraculous, the world will be afraid. The world will be afraid of what we carry. The reason why the world thinks we're the same is because believers have not understood who they are to function in that reality. But yay, the church is coming of age. The church is coming of age. The people of God are coming to a place of reality. You know why church members go to see native doctors? Because they don't know what they carry. That's why Christians go to native doctors. Most of them are not even born again anyway. Because a born again believer who has come face to face with his identity in Christ has no business seeing a native doctor. It's the native doctor that should be coming to you. Because what they are using is magic. What they are using is demonic. It is what Jesus defeated 2,000 years ago that they are using expired product. Native doctors are using expired product. Are you with me here? Yeah. Within the week, a young man came for counseling and brought his charm. He said he's tired. After listening on radio, he has now seen where the real power is. He brought his charm. He said, I have destroyed some, but I brought some for you people to see. They don't have power. He said, I imported this from, in, from China and I paid for it. It's a charm that I wear. But I have seen the real power. He's in church right now. Say, I have seen the real power. He brought his said, destroyed. I have destroyed others. But I, I wanted you people to see so that when I'm talking, you know that I brought an evidence. This is what people will pay for and be afraid of. See the way I'm doing it. Because it is like this. You understand? Jacqua Mananga. Jacqua Mianga, Ilotaba, Lebundu Kataya, Brea Breka, Ikotabaya. Glory, 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 glory. Behold, I give you power to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the devil and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Shakabaya. 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 Somebody shout, I'm possessed with the power of God. Shataya. Hey, Hey, I know now. Their own charms are in white chicken, white fowl, green fowl, foul spirits. Our own power is inside us. Hey, when we move, we carry power. When we sleep, we carry power. When we wake up, we carry power. Somebody shout power. Somebody shout power. Somebody shout power. Sack 
Kodaba. Sit down if you can. Kabo Yedesh. Sheko Badagagas. Sheko Bodaka Bodeke. Mebranan Bluda Sakata. Mambo Loto Dododosh. Nekruna Kotona. Kebolata. Take God at His word, independent of others. Bible says, What if some don't believe? Shall their unbelief make the power of God of none effect? God forbid. If you don't believe, you are the loser. Others are benefiting. Sulata. I say, Sulata. I say, Sulata. Let's look at some specific details in the four Gospels quickly. Stay with me. Diana. You know, a non-Christian can believe for miracles, right? A non-Christian can believe for miracles. A Muslim can receive miracles. I've prayed for Muslims and they've received miracles. We see them coming to us like Nicodemus and getting miracles privately. Because the only place, the only faith on earth where the gospel preached is backed with power is the Christian faith. I didn't say the only place where there is miracles. I said the only place where the message preached is backed with power is a Christian faith. Is a Christian faith. <clears throat> now, we saw that in the four gospels, we saw miracles in the Old Testament, even in the book of Acts. So, when God's power is in demonstration, I can believe for a miracle. Let me take two examples, and they are back to back. They are deliberate in the way it was documented. First of all, the woman with the issue of blood. You must have heard about her. Now, you must have a ready attitude. You didn't hear that. You must have a ready attitude towards the miraculous. A ready attitude. You must expect miracles all the time. In other words, there must be an attitude you wear all the time. It's an attitude of expecting miracles. Always your neck must be out like this. Expecting miracles. Always. You wear it as an attitude. I believe in miracles. Miracles, I believe in them more than my feelings. Creative, the power of God being creative means it wasn't there. The power of God put it there. That's creative. It wasn't there. The power of God put it there. Restorative means it was there and was lost. The power of God brought it back. So within the power of God are manifestations of creative, curative, restorative, preservative and of course provisions it can create what was in there and it can put back what used to be there it is also curative it, it can cure it can cure anything ailments whatever sometimes what dominates your mind will direct what you believe for that's why you must mind what you expose yourself to. Don't sit around people who talk about how miracle did not happen. Don't sit around people who talk about how they've been praying for 50 years, nothing has happened. Don't keep such people around you. They are atmosphere pollutants. Surround yourself with people who have experienced miracles, people who believe in miracles. Create around you all the time an environment of miracles. A positive atmosphere. A positive energy. Yeah. Live in that atmosphere. Don't keep depressive people around you. Don't keep sadists around you. Create an atmosphere that is filled with faith. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. Live in such an environment. Then things will just be happening. Things will just be happening. 
You are believing God for a fruit of the womb. Don't go around with women that have not had children. Don't. You are believing God for the fruit of the womb. Move around people that have had miracles. There are people in this church, doctors told them they can never have children. And they have children till they did family planning. There's a particular Sunday I was preaching and I walked to one particular woman in this church and I said, by this time next year, you know the story, right? By this time next year, you will carry a baby. She shouted, Amen. And she forgot that a few months ago, she did family planning. They have tied everything. Her and her husband have decided they will not have children again. And I spoke. She said, Amen. She missed her period that month. The word entered and scattered family planning. <laughs> she missed her period that month. She came to my house with a frown on her face and said, I didn't want a baby. You spoke it into me. Once I deliver, I will bring the baby to your house. I said, I'm not the one that received it. I only spoke. You had the choice to say no and to say yes. But since you said yes, enjoy. <laughs> and she delivered that baby. Keep yourself around people that have experienced God and believe in God. Don't keep people that are so toxic. Toxic. People that question everything. People that are so critical that even their life looks critical. Don't keep such people around you. That's why you, you keep yourself around people of faith. Are we in the building? Keep yourself around people of faith. All my friends are people of faith. I don't have many of them. There are a few. I can count them. <laughs> I can count my friends. There are very few. But every time we speak on phone, it's positive talk. What God is doing. What God has just done. What God is about to do. Where we're going. The things we're doing for God. How we're planning to take over nations. How we're pushing the gospel of Christ. How more people are coming to the kingdom. We can be on phone for two hours just talking about it. Sharing things. Exegesis. Breaking scriptures. Opening up insight. Discussing what God is doing in the now. What the body of Christ is about to experience. When we talk on phone. those are the, If you stay around where we're talking. You will be built up. That is, you are not the one talking. You just hang around where I am discussing on phone. You will be edified. What kind of friends I have? No friends we meet and we will be complaining how life is so hard. Things are difficult. This COVID-19 has affected everybody. People are losing their jobs. We don't know how we're going to survive. Even people that had good jobs are losing. Companies are closing down. Exxon Mobil is closing down and sacking all their staff. And uh, you know, all, all the companies are sacking people. Even government is struggling to survive. Government cannot pay salaries because things are so tough. Even in America, people are still being owed. The dollar is losing relevance. When you stay around such people too, even it will be a problem. Stay around people that believe that even when nothing is happening, there is a widow woman down the road that has some food for the man of God. That God makes ways where there are no ways. That Akabosha, am I talking to somebody? Somebody said things are tough. Tell him that's for you. My case is different. Where I function, there is possibility all the time. Shout, I hear you. Stay within an atmosphere of faith. Play godly music. Music that generates faith. Music that reveals who you are to you and reminds you of your possibilities. Shoot Allah. Shoot Allah. Shoot Allah. Sometimes ministers who are in practical ministry will confirm what I'm about to say. Sometimes when you go to villages or communities where there is no too much information, miracles happen very easy. You go to villages or in communities where there's no too much exposure and you just share with them about what Christ has done. They just receive with a childlike faith. And especially where they are used to idol worship. If you just reveal to them God's power, the same way they believe in their idols, they just transfer that faith to God and you see things happen. Then sometimes when you come around people that are exposed to social media, exposed to all kinds of things, people insulting pastors, abusing pastors, people talking all kinds of things, you get tangled. When we say receive, you say, mm, receive? <laughs> just like that. You carry blocked head. 
You can receive. You become an insulator, not a conductor. Because you have had things that have blocked your channel of reception. Sometimes it's better to be innocent. I didn't say to be an illiterate. I said to be innocent. There are two different things. You can be educated but innocent. And you can be an illiterate but not innocent. And you can be educated but not innocent. But you can also be educated but innocent. Find out when you get home. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. Hayata. There are miracles happening already. I hope you know that. Even on radio, on TV, everywhere. Now, there are two things I want you to look at. Two tendencies. That some people is too much exposure to information that is not productive. But when you stay where people have seen God do things, it's easy for you to receive. So we have the power of God in his creative, curative, restorative form. And I know we are, you know, we also have lying wonders. But it doesn't matter whether they are lying wonders as long as you know that you're functioning in the real. The ones that are inferior don't matter. Amen. I said Amen. We must create intentionally an atmosphere for miracles. Where what is around you makes it easy for you to believe for miracles. In Mark chapter 5, as I begin to round up this service, we continue on Wednesday and next Sunday. There's this woman we call woman with issue of blood who have been sick for many years. Brother Mark records it. Brother Mark said she has been sick for 12 years. 12 years of bleeding. A woman's period extends beyond 4-5 days to maybe 10 days. She is so worried and uncomfortable. Imagine a woman constantly in period for 12 years. Constantly bleeding for 12 years. Not 12 weeks. 12 years. That is 144 months of bleeding. Imagine seeing doctors and the Bible says she never grew better. She rather grew worse. She grew worse. Twelve years of seeing doctors. And those details were written there intentionally by Brother Mark. And you know, she is a Jew. Meaning, she wasn't hearing about healing for the first time. Twelve years is a long time. But you know what? 12 years means nothing to God's power. But when she heard about Jesus, what did she hear? That is key. What did she hear? I'm sure she didn't hear that that guy is a false teacher. She didn't hear that that guy is a heretic. She didn't hear that that guy was born without a father. She didn't hear that that guy was born. We don't know who pregnant his mother. And you will think you know him. But you are full of wrong information. She heard of Jesus. Which means she heard that under Jesus, the sick got healed. She heard that under Jesus, the lame walked. The blind saw. The crippled rose and walked. The dead raised back. She heard about Jesus, the right information. Mark 5, 25 to 29. Put it up for me. Glory to God. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she heard and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, straight what you believe you say, straightway, and what you say you receive, and what you receive you have. She said, then straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. 
The, the truth is that that wasn't the first time people taught Jesus. People have taught Jesus before. Look at Luke 6, 19. That was not the first time. Luke 6, 19. Mm -mm. And the whole multitude sought to touch him. For there went virtue, power, out of him. And healed them all. So that was not the first time somebody taught Jesus. But when she touched his clothes, she did not allow any distracting opinion. Now, that statement is not logical. A, a woman that has been bleeding for 12 years, I've seen all kinds of doctors. Yet, she was able to say, if I can touch, that's not logic. The hem of his garment, I know, I shall. She spoke the end result. She did not analyze the problem. She spoke the end result. I know, I shall be whole. Faith always speaks the end result. Faith always. It speaks the end result into the now. Faith always speaks the end result into the now. Into the now. And brother Mark paints a picture of how while the woman was deciding to touch Jesus' clothes, Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house. Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house. His face was set to go to Jairus' house. And this woman kept speaking her resolve. She did and straightway the blood dried up. I've seen ladies who didn't have period. Their period stopped in my meeting. And I've seen we are instantly in the service as I'm speaking. The period started. And that was the restoration of their period. The female circle. Because when the miraculous hits the service like it's all over this place and online and radio. And anything, can, anything can happen. And all kinds of things are happening right now. That you yourself are not in control of. All kinds of things are happening right now. Right here. On, online. On TV. On radio. Miracles are happening all over the place. Look at that Mark chapter 5 verse 29. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Next verse. Next verse. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself. That virtue had gone out of him. Turned him about in the press. And said who touched my clothes. Next verse. And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me. Next verse. And she, he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. Next verse. But the woman fearing, the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. 34. And he said unto her, Daughter, Thy faith, not my power. My power is always available, but it will take your faith to take it. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Now, Jesus was heading to Jairus' house, but this woman, by her faith, stopped the journey. That means her faith gave direction to the power of God. That means her faith redirected the power into her body. So faith redirects power. Because the power was going to Jairus' house. But she diverted the power. She hijacked the power. Say with me very loud, everybody. My faith, my faith can give direction to the power of God. Say with me very loud. The power of God is working in my bones right now. Speak it like you know it. Say again. The power of God is working in my organs. Right now. Say with me, the power of God is working on my hormones. 
right now. I didn't hear powerful, amen. Say with me, the power of God is working in my heart right now. Now say very loud, the power of God is working all over my body right now. The power of God is strengthening my body. Say it three times, the power of God is strengthening my body. Say it again, the power of God is strengthening my body. Now for the last time, the power of God is energizing my body right now she didn't get it when she said it but because she kept saying she got it she never stopped saying please sit down the greek says she kept saying it the power of god is working in my body now the power of god is working on my body now if some of us were diligent in speaking the word of god like we're diligent in taking medication We'll be having miracles all the time. You take medication three times a day. If you take those three times to speak God's word over your body three times a day, there is no ailment in your body that is born enough to withstand God's power. But you are more faithful in swallowing and drinking than speaking over your body. You begin to speak God's word. When my body starts misbehaving, come and see talkative. Come and see talkative. No, it can't stay here. It can't stay here. No, it can't stay here. In the name of Jesus, this is secure territory, bought with a price. This is secure territory. Your superior owns this territory. You are not born enough to function here. So you better exit right now. Kabato malaka tonaka. No, sickness can't stay here. This body has been bought with a price. I'm not going to have it. In the name of Jesus, I have what I say. I say this body is treated. this body is immunized there's enough immunity in this body to kick out every virus and bacteria no you can't stay here you I, i'll be talking throughout sometimes i'll be talking till the thing is gone i'm not aware i'm still talking it's after a while i'll discover ah it left some of you can take medication 10 times a day but you can't talk two times a closed mouth is a closed life. You've got to learn to talk and talk the right talk. Talk the right talk. Talk the right talk. Talk the right talk. What if when you have headache or ulcer or any pain, the first thing that comes to your mind is the power of God? Don't think medication. The first thing that should come to your mind when there's any condition is the power of God. Don't think of which doctor am I going to call. Eh, eh, even the doctor is helpless. Because sometimes what the doctors are doing is experiment. They are not even sure. They don't be calculating things for you. That's, that's why sometimes you see the doctor, you come back, your condition is worse. Because they themselves are using you to see if it is going to work. They are not sure of what you said. But the power of God is on point. It's on point. It's like a cruise missile. You know a cruise missile. When a cruise missile is unleashed, it will not detonate until it arrives target. When God's power is sent forth, it goes to the root of the matter. The power of God doesn't deal with branches. It goes to the root and takes care of it permanently. Am I teaching good here? Yeah. It goes to the root. Jesus spoke to the tree. Where did the words go to? The root. And what happened to the tree? It dried up. After how many hours? 24 hours. Why? The power of God suspends time, distance, and matter. That's why a whole tree can be dry in 24 hours. It never happens naturally. We're not talking of a flower. We're talking of, about a tree. Because God's power goes to the root of situations. It goes to the root of circumstances. God's power goes right in there. So when situations arise, the first thing to think of is God's power. Are we here? What comes to your mind first is what has been dominating, that what has been dominant in your thinking. When situations arise, what comes to your mind first is what has been dominant in your thinking. It's a revelation of what is dominating you. If it's doctor, medication, the first thing you think is a revelation of what is dominant in your thoughts. If there's an impossible situation in the natural, 
what comes to your mind first shows what has been dominating your thinking. When she heard about Jesus, she said, if I can touch but the hem of his garment, I know. I know. So the power of God gave a different direction. Faith redirected power. When is a miracle? A miracle when you receive the power of God. That's when a miracle happens. When is the miraculous? When you receive the power of God. What is the power of God? The gospel is the power. So when the gospel is being preached, the power is released. When you receive that, a miracle takes place. And you know, within that, that, that period, while they were still discussing with the woman with the issue of blood, Jairus' daughter, within that period, was reported to have died. Remember, Jairus' daughter was critically sick. Jesus was going quickly to go and stop her from death. Then the woman with the issue of blood redirected the power. So the power was interrupted and redirected. So he came now to face the woman. While he was with the woman, Jairus' child died. They now came to tell Jairus that your child has died. There's no point bringing Jesus anymore. You can imagine how Jairus must have been angry with that woman. You can imagine what was happening there. The woman has suffered many things. In other words, she had enough report from doctors. Detailed prognosis and diagnosis. When it comes to the miraculous, you will always have something in the natural saying otherwise. You will have contrary. It's natural. They will be there to resist the oppression of God's power. In the case of Jairus, in Mark 5.35... You must learn to deal with contrary information immediately. Look at Mark chapter 5 verse 35 quickly. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, certain which said, thy daughter is dead, dead, dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? Look at what Jesus did immediately. Next verse. As soon as Jesus had the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid. Only believe. When contrary things rise in your mind, strike. Strike. Open fire. Don't wait for doubts to linger. The moment anything that does not support your position arises by way of thought or speech or situation. Strike. Speak the word. Speak the word. As soon as Jesus said, you say, hey, only believe. Be not afraid. That's not the end of the matter. I'm here. Be not afraid. Such things can come from doctors. Doctors are not evil. They are doing their best. But within the natural. Such things can come from friends. It can also come from your feelings. Your feelings talk to you. Do you know that your feelings talk to you? A tree spoke to Jesus. Because the Bible says, and Jesus answered and said to the tree. He didn't say, and Jesus spoke to the tree. He said, and Jesus answered. That means the tree spoke. Then Jesus answered and said, tree, no man eat fruit of thee. Oh yes, situations will talk. Doubts will arise in your heart. But you must speak God's word. Don't trouble the master. You are believing for your daughter to be healed. You are told she is dead. And those guys are dead. And she's not only dead. Don't trouble the master. Now say, I'm still feeling the pain. No. When you feel the pain, say, God's power is working in my body. God's power is working in my body. Speak God's word and believe for a miracle. Can I have a good amen? In other words, you must always be ready for miracles. Where is God's power? God's power is his word. God's power is in his spirit. God's power is when believers come together. It's called a corporate anointing. You can always identify God's power. Once that is done, you are ready for a miracle. Once you identify the word of God coming, God's power is there. The spirit of God in your heart produces God's power. When we gather for fellowship around Jesus, God's power is available. And once that happens, you are ready for a miracle. Look 
look at the four things the woman did. Number one, she kept speaking. She kept speaking. She even sang it. Number two, she acted on what she said. She touched. Number three, she received it. She received it. It is not what you heard that is faith. There's no action in hearing. It is what you do with what you have heard that is called faith. So you must have an attitude of acting on God's word. You must do something. You must do something. You must do something. When Jesus finally came to the house of Jairus as I close, look at Mark 5, 39. See what happened, which you must do all the time. <clears throat> and when he was coming, he said unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. Next verse. And they laughed him to scorn. They laughed and fell down laughing. But when he had put them all out, you must know when to put people out. Shut the door. Shut the door. Keep out the devil. Shut the door. Give me that scripture. He put them all out. He taken the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying. Next verse. And he looked, took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talita kumi, which is being interpreted, damsel, and say unto thee, arise. But you could only do that when he had put the doubters out. Because if those laughing people were in, they would have dampened the atmosphere. There is an atmosphere for miracles. There is an atmosphere for miracles. You must always make sure the atmosphere is right for the miraculous. Either the word is coming or some, some Holy Ghost inspired revelation song singing. Our brethren gathered together to pray. An atmosphere of miracles. Remember, a miracle is illogical. It doesn't make sense. A miracle doesn't make sense. Salvation is a miracle. Forgiveness is a miracle. So why wouldn't I believe in miracles? I believe in miracles. And right now, all over this place, on radio, on television, on social media, in this building, in all our campuses all over the world, Miracles are happening right now. Stand on your feet. Let me pray quickly. I sense that anointing all over this place. I sense God's power all over this place. Shakola tabaya. Membro gadosakaya. Lift your two hands to heaven and say with me very loud, everybody, wherever you are. I am a candidate for a miracle. Can I hear you say three times? Two more times. One more time. Now put your hand anywhere you need a miracle. If it's your heart, your waist, your leg, your eyes, your ears, your, your, your whole body, put your two hands on your head. If it's your own whole body. I sense right now, those of you that are suffering from HIV, it's going to die off your body right now. People with infections, those infections are living. Those infections, infections, your lungs that are infected are getting healed right now. Yeah, anywhere there are infections, the power of God is moving over cases of infections and those infections are living right now. In the name of Jesus if you are listening on radio put your hands all over the place if you are watching on TV in our campuses on social media put your hand where you need a miracle and get ready for a miracle now in the name of Jesus Satan get your hands off of God's property in the name of Jesus you unclean spirit take your hands off I rebuke deaf spirit I rebuke blind spirit I rebuke infirmity come out in the name of Jesus whatever is not planted by my father shall be rooted out shall be rooted out shall be rooted out now be rooted out be rooted out pain be rooted out in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus right now we release God's power Right where you are. Receive creative miracles. Curative miracles. 
restorative miracles, restorative miracles, restorative miracles, creative miracles. We command tumors melt out, asthma go, migraines go, blood disease cease in the name of Jesus. From your head to the soles of your foot right now. Whatever was troubling your system ceases right now in the name of Jesus. Now receive miracles. Receive miracles. Pain go. Receive miracles. Sight be restored. Hearing be restored. Your weak body receives strength. Your joints receive strength. Your bones receive strength. Waste pain go. Heart conditions go in the name of Jesus. Miracles are happening. Miracles are happening. Tumors are, are disappearing. Yes, breast lumps are melting off. Ye kabado, shakana, kanoka, kalata, kadaba. Blood conditions are being corrected. 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 In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Now begin to do what you couldn't do before. You couldn't bend, bend. You couldn't hear, block the other ear and check the other one. You couldn't see, grab a written material and begin to read. You couldn't move, start moving. Yes, start. There's somebody on a sick bed. Start moving your legs now. Start moving your hands. Yes, start moving your legs. Yes, you can stand up. Stand up from that bed. Yes, I see you standing up. Stand up from that bed. Shaka bada. Now take your first step. Take your first step. You won't fall. Take your first step. Shakota, Malika, Rokuta, Malinga, Zemia, Kotana. Yes, yes, yes. Take your first step. Shikalata, Shikalata, Shikalata. Every hold of the enemy is broken. Now do what you couldn't do. If there were growths in your body, check them. They've disappeared. They've disappeared. People with conditions, check it right now. They've disappeared. Rakuta Mata. Laku Maneka Koroto Sakila Agara online on television on radio miracles are happening all over the place. Jikala, 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 pains have disappeared from your body. Check yourself, check your body, check your neck, check your neck, it can move now. Check your neck, it can move right now. Yeah, yeah, there are instant miracles all over the place, all over the place. Lekoratana. Now begin to give God a shout, begin to give God a praise, begin to give God a shout. Begin to give God a praise. Begin to give God a shout. Begin to give God a praise. Begin to give God a shout. If you can jump, jump. If you can scream, scream. If you can run, run. If you can squat, squat. If you can move, move. Do what you couldn't do with your leg. Do what you couldn't do with your leg. Do what you couldn't do with your leg. All over the place. Ah, miracle. say glory healings and miracles are happening all over this place now i speak to your job i speak to your businesses your career your family your marital life i speak to your marital life right now Zekia manukata in the name of jesus miracle for marriages receive it in the name of jesus in your job receive that miracle that check is signed those documents are approved that contract is approved Yes, in that office, somebody just stood and spoke for you. Somebody just spoke for you. Somebody spoke in your favor. Just now, just now. Things are shifting. Things are shifting. Things are shifting. Things are shifting. Your application has just been visited. It has just been visited. In the name of Jesus. Lift those hands and begin to give him thanks. Begin to give him thanks. Go ahead and give him thanks. I'm not hearing your voices at all. I'm not hearing your voices at all. The voice of rejoicing. The voice of rejoicing. The voice of rejoicing. The voice of rejoicing. The voice of rejoice. The voice of rejoice. See 
the miracles. See the miracles. See the miracles. See the miracles all over this place. See the miracles all over this place. See the miracles all over this place. Miracles have happened all over. Thank you, Lord. Check yourself. Check yourself. It's no more there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm afraid I'm running out of time, but I will have wanted to take some quick testimonies all over this place. You know, I want to take some quick testimonies all over this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You have a testimony. Can I see your hand up? You have a testimony in the building? Just wave your hand quickly, quickly. Wave your hand quickly. You have a testimony. There's one there, two there. Yes. You have a testimony. Just wave your hand. Something has happened right now. There's another one up there. And a testimony all over the building. You have testimony. There's some people there. I can see those hands all over the place. Now, quickly, quickly, come forward. We want to take those testimonies sharp, sharp. And those of you on radio, if you have a testimony, call this number right now. On radio, you have a quick miracle a testimony something has happened to you instantly quickly call this number plus two three four call this number right now plus two three four plus two three four eight zero three eight zero three two seven five six one zero four let me read it again plus two three four eight zero three two seven five six one zero four you can call quickly and share with us your testimony right now i believe that there are a lot more miracles happening all over the place quickly quickly producer just take the testimonies and let us know exactly what happened quickly all over the place those of you calling on radio the phone, the phone is with us. quickly quickly tell us what the Lord? my name calls sister maria kumofu kamarun die, my papa, die, my papa died 96. tell us what happened Asma. right now my yes. testimony, I want my testimony now for a place where I begin for. So the a place is very serious. My brother, I see this Cameroon day now, so every born to us, we stay inside bush. So as we stay inside bush, I call my brother, I see we run Dr. Gabriel, Nigeria I need somebody inside. to hear what there is and just give us a summary quickly. I just need a summary. So as I tell you, the a place will be very serious. So my brother, I say, I come for, for Nigeria. This say, I come go for native doctor. So as I reach for Nigeria here, yeah. some they don't reach. So, so some they don't reach. I tell you, say, we no go go for church. She say no. Any go church. She say get so pastor. When a pastor Damina, he hear his name for for radio. He say so that one I own church. So we want radio. So they put uh, batteries. So they uh, form batteries. So as they put that for day on the thirty first. So pastor Damina, the preliminary take all the the this thing for the for the radio. So as see the pray say any sickness in your life begin to pray as I talk now. So so as see pastor Damina, he talk and he follow the the prayer. As he talk and he follow the prayer. On the 31st, I see talk say, be healed in Jesus' name. As I don't have like Jesus, my heart don't make you a queen. I fall for dance. So as I fall for dance, so sleep carry me go. As I sleep carry me go, I want to go to for evening time. My brother come back for it trap the way we go check him. I tell it to you, it will happen for me. So I go say, meet for that evening time. I talk for you, say, boy, no go buy me that my drugs again while he drink him. He tell me, say, no get money. So as I don't be so, I want to see on the ending for inside that. So what happened right now? He said, I end in for January. I know for the airplane again. I tell my brother, I say, John bless that prayer away, Dr. Damina, pray for me. So, I don't heal. He said, Yes, he said, John bless it, all heal. So, so, okay, today, so I will talk to you. I know if you go back, I see the pastor. So, man of God, thank you. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. In the name of Jesus, it is done. In Jesus' name. To the point. Straight to the point. But one line, I had a legal issue. I've been discharged and acquitted. Discharged and acquitted. Can you give God praise in this place? Glory. Um, I was involved with an accident. I couldn't swing this my hand. Papa, you, while you were praying. You couldn't do this. I couldn't do this. So while you were praying, you said, begin to do what you couldn't do. I was able to swing this. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. I thank God for my life. Because I'm based in Lagos. I enter. My name is Marshall. I'm from Kwaibom. I'm based in Lagos. So what I'm, was the that, problem and what has okay. happened? The problem is that as I enter a kid, I have a terrible accident. The motor scattered my leg. The bone is falling down. So I now take me for the hospital. 
they take me for the place where they walk with my legs. So I now listen for the master preaching in the night. So I have a belief. My leg is now is okay. So that's why it's my job. So now for. your leg, you feel fine. Yeah, yeah. Thank do you. what you couldn't do with it. I can I can walk it. Before I used to walk in clothes. So now my leg is. So now you can move without a cross. Yeah, yes, yeah. You're fine now. Yes, sir. Can you go ahead and give God praise? Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Now listen to me. M many of you, things have happened within the week. You will begin to realize it. You will begin to recognize the things that God has done for you. Can I have a powerful amen? amen. Can you all stand on your feet? You are sitting very fast. Stand on your feet this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say with me, this week is a week of miracles for me. I'm not hearing you. Can I hear you louder? Can I hear you loudest? Say, my neck is stretched out. Expecting miracles. All over the place. This week, I receive miracle phone calls. Miracle connections. Relationships that add value to my life. I will step into the right places at the right times. This is my week. Miracles. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Now listen to me online quickly. I know there are a lot of miracles online too. You can shoot us an email and share with us the testimony. But I want to quickly take up your offerings. We give in honor of the word of God. And don't forget, on Wednesday there's still going to be a miracle service. And next Sunday is still going to be a miracle service. There's a lot God is doing among us at this time. Now listen quickly. I want to take up your offerings in honor of the word of God. So wherever you are, I'd like you to grab a good offering. And let me announce, next Sunday is Partnership Sunday. And I want to thank all of you partners who have supported us and continue to support us. To enable us to do what we're doing all over the world in pushing the gospel of Christ to the ends of the earth. Next Sunday is partnership. And if you're not a partner yet and you want to be a partner, all you need to do is send an email to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com and we will send you all the details for partnership. So all partners, next Sunday as you're coming, come ready for partnership. The next thing I want to talk about before I pray for your offerings is within last week, we launched a major social media campaign and I'm sure some of you have seen the campaign. We have this campaign going on aggressively on social media. Because we have 7 billion people on earth to reach with this message. And many of them are bound by religion, bound by tradition, bound in darkness. So we are pushing as much as we can. And because I want the campaign to run for the next one month, we need people to support us, both online, in the house here, and on radio. You know, with a hundred dollars, fifty dollars, you know, just support us. And the reason why we're calling dollars is because the payment for the social media campaign is in dollars. So if you're going to give us $100, $500, $200, $300, even $1,000 to help us push the gospel to where people are. Social media gives us access to about 3 billion people, 3 billion on social media to get the word to them all over the world. As we get more money, we can get to everywhere. Within the last one month, social media told me two days ago, we have reached close to 2 million people within the last one week. Within the last one week, we have reached close to 2 million people. You know, we've reached them within the last one week. We want to reach as many as 100 million, 200 million within the next three, four weeks. And we need you to help us. Because the more people we reach, the more it is easy for the truth of Christ to liberate men. And that's what we're all about. So you want to give us support, $100, $200, $50, $1,000, whatever it is, between now and tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. All right, there's an email address, Dr. Abel Damina. Just send us and say to support social media campaign. We will send you the, the, the devoted account for that particular campaign so that you can pay in your monies into that particular account. I'm expecting to hear from all of you, you know, both the social media people, our campuses. We really want to get as aggressive as possible. Then the last thing you will do for me, I mean, two last things. The, the second to the last thing is I want you to pray. Every time you remember the social media campaign, just say a word of prayer. Father, as they watch the videos, let the Holy Ghost inspire their minds to see something that will cause them to want to hear more. Let the word of God come alive. Let a sentence, an utterance, a statement provoke them to want to look for more. That's the first prayer. The second thing you will do for me is, please, every one of you, both in this building, 
Make sure that every time we release those short, short videos, you share them on your page so that the people on your page will also have access. That's another thing. Help us share. There are many of them we have released as close as 20 short, short videos. Five minutes, ten minutes, three minutes, two minutes. But on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Facebook. Help us share them. Apart from helping us to sponsor them, help us share them on your page. Let's unitedly blanket the earth with the truth of the gospel. Can I have a powerful amen? amen. All right, grab your honor offerings. Let's give in faith right now everywhere. If you're watching online on radio, you, you know, you're listening or on Facebook or, you, or, or, or television, the banking details are scrolling. You can quickly send in your honor offering right now. Lift up your offerings, everybody. Father, we thank you for the privilege of honoring the word and we thank you for the opportunity of making the word of God available all over the earth. We decree and declare right now that every hold of the enemy is destroyed. Whatever is not planted by God is totally terminated. And we release miracles of provisions for those in need. In the name of Jesus, receive that miracle. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. And we give you praise for the blessing upon those that are supporting us on the social media campaign also. We decree that this week is going to be a week of great impact all over the world. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord fills the earth as the water covers the sea. We give you praise for answered prayer in Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Now listen to me, uh, online community, television, Facebook, and radio. We're going to be signing you off right now, but we're looking forward to hearing from you. Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. We go live at 6 p.m. You know, uh, on all platforms on Wednesday. And every day at 6 p.m. we have services going on on Facebook and on Instagram for you to watch and follow the teachings of God's word. And then next Sunday we're back here, 8 a.m. GMT plus one and 11 a.m. GMT plus one. We love you guys and it's always a joy to serve you the grace of God. Power City, are we ready to celebrate them? Let's put our hands together and celebrate everybody that is joining us online. Glory to God. Glory. Glory. Amen. Glory. Amen. Woo. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hit it. Let's do it as we bring our offerings and lay them all over this world. You have by this message. For these, all the messages and books by Dr. Abel Damina, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.